There are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Benjamin Disraeli, <laughs> part three. Yes, I just got through using that quote in my other two parts. And in part three, we're going to take a closer look at the Monty Hall paradox. Let's make a deal, folks. I got three boxes right up here. There are keys in one of them. You got to pick one. Pick one. Come on, pick one. You all know the show, right? Let's make a deal. I believe they got a new version of it on TV now. I haven't seen it. But I sure grew up watching Monty. Funny guy. Great guy. And of course, almost everything is the same. You, you're given three choices. You pick one. So what does that mean statistically? You got a one out of three chance when you first join on to this of winning. So in this scenario, the Monty Hall paradox, we got three boxes and there's a set of keys to a brand new car under one of those boxes. The other two boxes are empty. And of course, Monty asks you to choose one and then he tries to entice you into selling that box. Hey, I'll give you $100 for it, $200. No, 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 I don't want to do it. And then he helps you understand, look, you got a one in three chance of winning, but you got a two in three chance of losing. Here, I'll give you more money, 500. So eventually what happens is Monty's going to entice you one more time. He's going to go, listen, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you one of the boxes. Let's take a look at one of the boxes you didn't choose. Oh, it's not there either. Well, there. Now you got a one in two chance of winning. I'll give you a thousand dollars. Now this is back in 1975 when they were doing it, so that's a lot of money back in 1975. Of course, a brand new car. This is one of the better cars and might have cost four or five thousand. Otherwise, new cars back then cost two thousand. Sad place we're in right now. In fact, to remind, I'm a digress for a moment because I found a quarter this morning while I was riding my bike. I'll pick that up. And I realized, damn, when the Federal Reserve Act was passed, that would have been like picking up a penny. Now it takes 25 pennies to pick up a penny that's worth the same. A penny nowadays is only worth four cents. Now, I'm digressing for a moment because it's really relative to this whole story. So we're talking about money, right? Not the same anymore. Inflation. But back to the analogy, or back to this, the story of Monty Hall. What do you do? What, is you, what do you do? Now, first of all, let's question whether or not, is Monty really right? Do we really have a one in two chance of winning? Now, this gets a little tricky, and one reason why I'm using this brain teaser is to help you guys have, understand how easy it is to get tricked with statistics. Because this paradox was presented twice, once in 1975 and then 15 years later, 1990. And both times a person who presented this to the public were ridiculed and harassed by all these incest mathematicians going, you guys are idiots, what are you doing? And it goes to show you how if you don't understand the truth, if you're missing a piece of the puzzle, or if you take the first step heading east, it doesn't matter how well you do everything because you took the first step going the wrong direction. Now what I'd like to do, what I'd like for you guys to do is pause this for a second because I'm going to go ahead and explain this. But I want you to figure this out in your head. Pause it, figure it out. Once you got the answer, come back and let's see if you're right. Is Monty Hall right? After he shows the person the box, do, do you have a one in, in 50 chance, or one in two chance of winning? Are those your odds? Pause it, come back. Okay, now you're back. Let's think about this. What's really happened? When Monty Hall shows you one of those boxes, we all know, if you've ever watched the show, that Monty never shows where the keys are or the prize, right? In other words, Monty knows. Obviously, Monty knows. It wouldn't make sense. And well, let's take a look and see if it's other box. The first box you didn't choose. Oh, there it is. You lost. <laughs> wouldn't make sense, right? And that's never happened. It never will. Never, it never has. It never will. Why? Because Monty knows where the box is. And that's the key to understanding this question or this paradox where you really don't have a 1 in 50 chance anymore. In fact, if you understood the odds and if Monty said, I tell you what I'll do now that we know it's not here, do you want to trade for the other box? Now, the only other time I would say no it would be if my intuition was really tuned in and I knew I had the right box. Otherwise, I'd go with the statistics and I got me a beat. I won't leave me alone. 
been buzzing all over me. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm sure you can. Anyway, uh, where was I? That piece that distracted me so much. Going back to, okay, what do you have? Uh, uh, darn it, get out of here. Well, I flicked him that time. Uh, I guess he was thirsty. Now he's around the bike. He'll, that's the same guy that was buzzing around my camera, I think, about a week ago. You'll probably see him. He's buzzing around my bike right now. He'll probably be in front of the, the lens in just a second. Okay, look at what we got. Would you want to take the other box? Or would you keep yours? Well, again, if your intuition isn't really strong, or if you don't feel like there is a gut feeling that that's the right box, you'd be a fool not to say, yeah, I'll take the other box, Monty. Knowing that you don't have a 50-50 a, a or a one in two chance of winning if you keep your box or if you get the other box. And the key here is this isn't a new game. You didn't just join the game and Monty goes, okay, here are two boxes, pick one. Now when you pick one, you got a one in two chance, you see? That's not how the game started. When you jumped on board, you were given three, one, one pick out of three choices. It's always going to be one out of three no matter what happens. But once you know what happens, then the numbers change. And it all depends on whether or not Monty knows or not. So if Monty doesn't know, he's going to win one out of three times, and then the game's going to be over, and it's going to look stupid. And we know that's not going to happen. So we always know Monty's going to show the other box. So really, when Monty shows you the other box, he should be saying, okay, uh, you can keep your box, or do you want to take the other two boxes? Because when he, when, he, when he reveals that box to you, he's, he's, he's giving it to you, basically. In other words, again, you're not giving one box. If Monty didn't show you which one of the box it was, and he said, would you want to trade your box for the other two? Of course I'll trade my box for the other two, because that's what you're getting. When he eliminates one, that's, that's what in effect he's doing. He's giving it to you. So it's not a 50-50, it's not a one and two chance. And there were so many mathematicians all around the world that insisted they were right. And yet they weren't right. Because it's always going to be a one out of three chance. Now to illustrate this point, to make it understandable, we can expand the numbers. Instead of saying one in three, let's say one in a hundred or a thousand. Or make it even better, a million. This will really illustrate the point, a million. Let's say, get out of here, go on, go on, go on, go on. You're distracting me. Let's say that I got a million boxes out here. I got keys in one of them. Pick one. I'll take number one. Okay. You got one in a million chance of winning. Now, of those 999,999, let's take a look at 998. Or hell, I'll just give them to you. <laughs> now, uh, better yet, let's open them up. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, there's nothing in them. Now we got your box, number one, and now um, box number a million. Would you want to trade? Would you trade the box that you only had a, a one in a million chance or the other one? Now, if I started the, the game new and I only had these two boxes, it isn't, there isn't a million factors, right? It's, it, there's only two. So we didn't join the game when there was only two. We joined it when there was either three or a million in this case. So it all depends on the person who eliminates the box. Do they know where the boxes are? Are the keys are the prizes at? If they do, you know they're not going to show you where it's at. It does. It, that's not how it works. So in this case, it's obvious. We know the odds of, of getting the keys is to go with piece number a million, because there are only two sets. Here's one set that has one. Here's another set that has 999,999. What are the odds? It's going to be in this set or this set. Well, one in a million here and here. If I can have all of them, you got them all. But let's take all of those and exclude all but one. Now, you see, it's got to be the one. So, the purpose of the Monty Hall paradox is, paradox is to get you guys to think. If you really believe you're, you see the big picture, you might be tricked and fooled, and you're taking the first step heading east, looking for the sunset, and you're doing everything perfect, everything perfect, and you're wrong. Just like these mathematicians were wrong when they said, it's one out of two. No, it's one out of three. Or it's one-third, two-thirds. Reveal one of them, hey, that's a gift. I'll take this one because now it's a two-thirds possibility of getting those keys. Again, my friends, there's three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Who do you believe? The experts? We can't trust our experts. There are no experts. 
conflict of interest, money. How many years did they tell us that cigarette smoking was okay? Edward Bernays was responsible for that one, along with getting us to eat bacon and women smoking cigarettes. Do a little research on Edward Bernays, and you'll see that the whole purpose of having a PR firm, again, is to deceive us and fool us. There are these so-called third independent companies or whatever, foundations that will report on something and claim they have no connection, and yet they do. So that's what's happened. That's thanks to the PR firms. That's thanks to statistics. We have corrupt people twisting data, creating what appears to be an independent nonprofit company that really has financial ties to the people wanting us to believe a certain way. So who do we believe? Heed the words of Aristotle. Trust or believe only your own experience. There is no fact like a fact learned from your own life. And the best fact that you can learn is that the only expert there is when it comes to health is us. Health care is self-care. Most of our illnesses and ill behaviors are self-inflicted. Stop making the mistakes, the warning signs go away. What's the easiest way to start if this is all new to you? It's a solid food vacation. Oh, that was nice. I hope that came through, that monarch. I think, he, I, think I just missed it. It looked like he flew just right off the top. Can't wait to see that. It, take that solid food vacation, my friends. Drink nothing but a gallon or two of juice, four to eight liters of juice. Watch your life go to another level. Got a video down below on how to do this, a two-hour seminar. I got 28 related videos. I don't sell any products. I don't sell juicers. All I want you to do is be the best that you can be. Because when that happens, everyone around you is going to benefit. And if enough of us do this, we're all in for a treat.